A topic I was asked to answer is the promise element stand and uh, its iterations, which I think is an interesting topic. I have no conflict of interest. Here are the questions and the points I would like to discuss. <clears throat> First, what is the current role of coronary drug eluding stents? Which drug eluding stents should be used today? What are device iterations? When is a new stent, really a new stent? This is just a question of Stephen just now. Uh, before we go to the PROMOS element, we have to understand a little bit about the PROMOS drug eluding stent history, then the PROMOS element and its iterations, its little modifications. And finally, last but not least, I will try to make some take home messages. What is the current role of drug eluding stents in the coronaries? Uh, at the ESC in Barcelona, the uh, new DAPT guidelines were presented. And here's the key sentence. It says, you know, level 1A, the drug eluding stance is the preferred treatment of option, which means that today, actually, bare coronary stents are out. Which drug eluding stance then should be used today? I've put together this here for the sake of time. I will not read them all, of course. We have durable polymer. Uh, drug eluding stents uh, for permanent implants. This session is only about permanent implants. We have biodegradable polymer, drug eluding stents, and no polymer. And in this session, we will focus more on the durable polymer permanent implant stents. So what are device iterations? That's actually the topic of, of this session. And when is a new stent really new? I have gave you here some example of device iterations, modifications of the science stent. It all started with the science V, and then the Prime, and the Expedition, and now the Alpine. But they all have the same metallic platform. They have the same polymer, and just little changes in the balloon and catheter. So I think these are not really major modifications. But a major step forwards was from PROMOS to PROMOS element. Actually, PROMOS and science were the same stents, but the PROMOS element went from cobalt chrome to platinum chromium, and then we have some more modifications, which I will go into more detail later. Actually, this is the key question. I had the honor to publish this paper together with Patrick Serois. We have changes in drug type, in polymer release profile, material composition, stem platform, differences in strut thickness. So here's the key sentence. With the increasing number of companies uh, investing in the development of so-called newer stand system, our regulatory bodies, scientific community and industry need to agree which data can be transferable and which has to be reacquired. So when is a new stand really a new stand? The PROMOS drug eluding stand has an interesting history. It was actually developed by Guidant, but then the stand production went from Guidant to Abbott, and Abbott produced the science V as promise for Boston Scientific. Well, this ended in 2009, and the first question is how did the science promise stand perform as compared to other drug eluding stands? Well, this is the Resolute trial. I had the honor to be on the steering committee and co investigator of this trial, and uh, you were asking about long term results. These are the five years data, and there's absolutely no difference. Just look at the curves, not at the details details between the uh, Resolute and the Xions V stands. Very similar results with a five-year outcome of the 2021 trial here. Again, they are really comparable outcomes over five years, which actually brings me to the uh, conclusion that the often quoted statement that the Xions promised drug eluding stand is the gold standard among the newer generation drug eluding stands. Actually, this is a marketing tool. This has never been proven. So the next step was the PROMOS element drug eluding stent. And uh, it had the same coding as the PROMOS. There were some little changes in the connectors, but the major change was the switch from cobalt chromium to platinum chromium. So this is a new stent. And as I said, a new stent requires a new randomized trial. One of these was the platinum trial here in about 1,500 patients. Science PROMOS versus PROMOS element, the new kid on the block. And as you can see here, and as you know, actually, the uh, both stands are really comparable. So the primary endpoint of non-inferiority has met. Well, this is another study. We participated here in uh, almost double patient, almost 3,000 patients. Again, the promise element, but not worth the science V, but 
Optic Science Prime. And the question is, is there a difference between these tents? It was a non-inferiority trial. The curves are a little bit disturbing because uh, the lower curve is the Science Prime and the upper curve is the promised element. Well, it was a non-inferiority trial and non-inferiority was met. But this raises the question whether the Science Prime is not just a little modification, but maybe a major uh, modification that might explain the results. Then there was another study, the 22 study, comparing the uh, promise element versus the resolute integrity, uh, which was also an iteration of the resolute stand. And as you can see here, just recently published, the three-year results are almost comparable, non-inferiority met. Well, this puts together all the major studies with the promise element. And as you can see on the right side, all met the criteria of non-inferiority. For the sake of time, of course, I cannot show you all these data. Just recently, there was a meta-analysis published in over 11,000 patients with the platinum chromium uh, virolimus eluting stent versus the other DES. And here are these trials which were included in this meta-analysis. And this showed very nicely that there's actually no difference in these clinical parameters. The only difference is the old discussion about uh, the longitudinal stent deformation, but you can see that the longitudinal stent deformation did not have any effect on clinical variables. But nevertheless, there were some iterations because of this longitudinal stent distortion. So the next step was the promise element plus with an improved balloon, more layers, two layers instead of one layer. And then the next was the promise premier with more connectors. I do not read all these numbers, but they had more connectors to make it more stable and changes in the catheter, stip and shaft. So the question is, how does the promise premier uh, behave? And you see here with plus and minuses and zeros, some little differences between these three stents. How do these compare to other stents, other drug eluting stents? Here you see the studies for the Promise Element Plus and for the Promise Premier. And uh, I show you just the results of the P-Search registry trial, which was recently published. And this was the comparison of the Science Prime and the Promise Premier. And here you can see that at least after one year, there's no difference in these clinical parameters. Well, this brings me to the take-home messages. Newer generation drug eluding stents are the gold standard for PCI. Bare metal stents are out. There are considerable technical and clinical differences between the various DES. There is no class effect of DES. Each new DES should prove its safety and its efficacy in randomized trials, since this is now the key question here. Since new drug eluding stents are usually more expensive, they have to prove their superiority versus the current standard drug eluding stents to justify the higher price. Whereas changes of the metal, polymer, and eluted drug are justified to classify this as a new stent, it is unclear what other modifications in the shaft, balloon, connectors, and so on can be accepted without new data or will require new studies. And of course, not every little modification, so-called iteration, will require a new randomized trial. And last but not least, regarding to the PROMOS series, the PROMOS, the PROMOS element, and the iterations, they have shown to be non-inferior to other contemporary drug eluding stands. Thank you.